So how's it going so far? Were you able to build parts of the best city guide layout? Now I'm going to show you one way you can build this layout. If you did things different than I did, it's okay because there's no 100% correct way of coding this layout. In fact, I encourage you to do some things differently and experiment with the layout styles. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some layout wrappers. So in the HTML, I'll start by adding a container around the content inside main header. So right below the opening header tag, I'll add a div with the class container. And then I'll place the new closing div tag right above the closing header tag. Then I'll add a container around the three columns. So right above the opening div tag for the secondary column, I'll add a div and give it the class container. Then I'll add the new container closing div tag right after the tertiary closing div tag. So the containers I just created will center the layout on the page and keep it from looking too wide or too narrow depending on the device or viewport width. And I'll add the width and margin styles later. So now in style.css, I'm going to write the rest of the base styles for the name and navigation elements. So first, right here in the name rule, I'm going to add a margin property and set the value to zero. This removes the default top and bottom margins from the H1, and it also helps prevent that collapsing margin behavior you learned about in the first section of this course. Next, I'll go back to my style sheet and create a new rule that targets main nav, and I'm going to set its top margin value to five pixels. This gives main nav a little more separation from the site name above. In the rule below main nav, so right here, I'm going to add a display property and set the value to block. Then I'll add a padding property. Then I'll set the top and bottom padding to 10 pixels and the left and right padding values to 15 pixels. This makes the name and navigation link hover targets taller and wider so that the links are easier to click with a mouse and easier to tap on touchscreen devices. Next, I'm going to write the base styles for layout containers like the main header, the banner, footer, and the content columns. So back in my style sheet, right under the layout containers comment, I'm going to create a new rule that targets main header, and I'm going to define top and bottom padding. So I'll say padding top, I'll give it a value of 0.5M, and I'll set the bottom padding to 0.5M as well. Right below, I'll create a new rule that targets the banner class and main footer. Then I'm going to say text align center. So this will center align the content in the banner element and down below in the footer. So it looks like the large banner div here needs top and bottom padding to create some white space around the content inside. Back in my style sheet, again, under the layout containers, I'll go into my banner rule and I'm going to add a padding property and I'll set the top and bottom padding value to 3.2 M and the left and right padding value to zero. Then I'll give it a bottom margin. So I'll say margin bottom, 60 pixels. The bottom margin will add some nice separation between the banner div and the content columns below it. Next, I'll create small gutters between each column in my layout using padding values. So back in my layout container styles, right under the banner rule, I'll create a new rule that targets the class call. Then I'll add a padding right property and set the value to 1M, and I'll add a padding left property, and I'll also set its value to 1M. The padding values make the content easier and more pleasant to read because the text isn't up against the edge of the columns. So next, in the page element section of my style sheet, I'm going to target the H1 inside the banner here. So it has the class headline. So back in my style sheet, I'll create a new rule that targets headline. And then I'm going to set 
its bottom margin to zero. I'm doing this because I think there's a little too much space between the headline and the tagline below it. So once I refresh the page, we can see that it looks a little better. There's not as much space between the two elements. Okay, so in the next video, I'll begin showing you how I style the layout for large screens using media queries.